Hey, you, hey, you, come on, sit down. You're sitting at the grown-ups table. I'm your host, Jesse Pimpinella, and today John is on assignment, but I have two very special guests with us today. We got below me, uh, Nigel. Nigel, how you doing? We're good. I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing great. And my Excellent. lovely wife, Sarah. Hi. So uh, today we're going to be talking about the secrets of Dumbledore. We're going to just to give you guys a quick overview, we're going to talk about the legacy of the Harry Potter films, how this movie either hinders it or improves upon it. Uh, we're going to go into our favorite characters, talk about certain controversies that are around the film. But before I go any further, I want to say make sure you like and subscribe uh, to our video, our channel, wherever you're listening, whether it's Facebook or YouTube. And remember, all rerun episodes go live on YouTube Thursday morning. So if you're in the middle of watching this, you may not be able to finish it in time. No worries. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Grown Ups Table, and you'll be able to watch past episodes as well as episodes like this. And now let's get right into it. So the Fantastic Beasts franchise, um, it, it started in 2015. It was meant as a continuation, but it's more prequel, but you know what I mean, an expansion upon the wizardry world of Harry Potter. Uh, kind of, and it seems like the biggest focus of this was the relationship between Grindelwald and Dumbledore, and at the epicenter of it all is Newt, who is kind of experiencing all this uh, around him. So uh, it's it's kind of a, I mean, let's face it, the last time a, a, a renowned teacher asked a student to help him was Breaking Bad. So now we got the Breaking Bad version of the wizarding world because <laughs> he's Dumbledore's like, I need you to do something for me. What are we doing? We're going after a terrorist. It's yeah, like, I what? Mean, Dumbledore does that to Harry. So it's not really the first time it's happened in the wizarding well, world. Well, technically this is the first time chronologically. True. True. Okay. So yeah, I mean, yeah. Hey, trust me. Technicality. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's face it. When it comes to fucking over kids, the Dumbledores are amazing. All right. They, they abandon credence. Uh, Dumbledore called Dibsies to abandon Harry Potter on the doorstep. I mean, you know, he was like, ooh, Dibs, 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 I'll be there. Also, He's had the practice. He offered no protection to Neville, even though he knew the prophecy could either be Harry or Neville. And he was like, no, Potters, get a secret, a secret keeper. I mean. So I think at the end of the day, Dumbledore is quite a dick. <laughs> yes, we can agree Where? on that. And, and yeah, and I'll rant a little bit more about that. But just to give an overview of the franchise real fast before we dive into it and discuss it. So, like I said, the first movie was Newt uh, coming to America. Uh, not not like an Eddie Murphy reboot in the Wizardy world. Uh, he had to, he was there. Uh, then uh, Colin Farrell. I feel bad for him in that movie because he's like, you're, you're going to be Grindelwald. Excellent. But you're not going to look like it. You're just the cover for him. Actually, it's Johnny Depp. Oh, man. So I felt bad for him. So that, so it turns out Grindelwald was behind everything. Second movie is about the prison break and uh, pretty much starting his own uh, rallies to get people uh, part of the uh, anti-muggle train. And then the third movie was, uh, I guess the best way to describe it, uh, Nigel, would you agree, on the, agree with this? Kind of a, uh, an election year. It was it was an upsetting um, political uh, uh, just commentary. It was like this can't be a coincidence that this third movie is coming out right now. Yeah, you expect one of them to jump up with a "Stop the Steal" sign. <laughs> it's, oh, uh, it's rough. It, 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 I was getting that, and technically, he did try to steal the election. I mean, he wasn't stealing yeah. ballots, but he was uh, <laughs> mutilating and necromancing animals. I mean, yeah, which he, I don't know. <laughs> he did that, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, and then they did the recount, which was just having the the brother of the animal to bow in front of somebody. Which, by the way, can we admit that the wizarding world, a lot more simple. True. Very true. It's up there with the groundhog that they use to see if winter's going to last longer. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that's what we need to make. Because, like, think about it. our elections in this country last about two years from starting to say, hey, I'm running to the day you take office. It's about roughly two years, if not three anymore. But, the, like, Grindelwald, he got acquitted of his charges. And then within two days, he's, he's, in, the, he's in the general election. 
So what you're saying is they impeached Grindelwald. <laughs> and that didn't deter him from running again for election. Pretty much. Pretty okay. much. It didn't hurt him. He was like, I don't care. I'm seeing some concerning parallels. There is a concerning parallels with this. But we will, won't get too much into that because uh, one of the things I want to talk about first is how this film, how this film franchise has either boistered up or added to the Harry Potter legacy, or has it even hurt it? Now, you two, uh, now, I, I know, Sarah, you read the books. You are the first editions. Nigel, uh, what is your personal experience in the Harry Potter world? I, I can't read. I listen to the audiobooks. That Better than me. Way better than me. <laughs> I, um, I got into Harry Potter because uh, I was at a point in my life where I was commuting for over three hours a day. It was spent in the car. And okay. it was like, I got to I gotta do something with that time. This is not good. So I started listening to the Harry Potter uh, audiobooks. And I listened to the first one. It took like a week. Uh, then I just kept going through them. And it got to a point where I li had listened to all of the audiobooks going on about a dozen times each. I've, oh, listened, wow. to the whole, I've listened to the whole series. Minimum 10. Minimum 10. Might might be eleven, but I'm pretty sure it's twelve. So I mean, there, I mean, there. So basically, what from what I'm telling you, you probably have gone through the books that amount of time physically. Yeah, there was a point in time where, because I started reading these books, I think by the time Goblet of Fire came out, and what I would do is I would, so I would finish the new book that came out, and then I would keep rereading. The books that were out until the next book release which i mean that was like two a two-year span one or two years yeah i i don't know how many times i've read them i don't think i want to admit to how many times i've read them because it's probably a gross number at this point mm -hmm. yeah but so i guess what i'm at what i want to ask you both is uh now I'll, I'll have you start first do you feel that this uh this franchise has added to the Harry Potter uh, legacy, or do you feel like it has done some damage to it? I think, uh, I don't think it necessarily damaged Harry Potter as a whole. I think it's a separate thing that's only technically related that didn't do what I think it set out to do. I don't think it hurt Harry Potter. I just don't think it accomplished what it wanted to do. Well, I should say hurt Harry Potter, but I mean, I guess the original IP that it, sp it spun off from. Yeah, yeah, so if, if you're yeah, if you're if you're including every single piece of Harry Potter media and you're like you know now that this is here, what what happens? I, the whole thing went from like an A minus B plus to like a B minus C plus. Yeah, because I mean one of the things that's so interesting right now is Warner Brothers is backpedaling a little bit. You know they're like saying ah we'll wait and see on this movie. You know, it's kind of crazy that, you know, Harry Potter, let's face it, for the last 20 years, has pr it's print money. It prints mm -hmm. money. Yes. And you, you put the Wizard D world on it, Harry Potter, it's going to print money. But now it's gotten to the point now where they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. And it, it, it's, it's a shocking matter. Now, Sarah, oh, I know <laughs> you're about to say something. I, 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 yeah. I was going to cue you up. But go for it. Personally, I'm all for the karma that J.K. Rowling is getting for this. And you're referring to the uh, turf comments you made Turf on. comments. She's just a shit human being. I really, like, when the first Fantastic Beasts movie came out, I was so excited. I was like, yes, it's my childhood. First one, I loved it. And then the second one came out, and I was like, all right, what the fuck? And the third one, I mean, it was better. It wasn't amazing. I think the issue is it's damaging because she's going against stuff that has already been established in the Harry Potter series. And those that, for those who do, don't see this, what are some of those things that she has uh, contradicted? So she contradicted McGonagall's birthday. McGonagall wasn't born until 1935, but she shows up and is teaching in Hogwarts in 1927. Um, and J.K. <laughs> J.K. Rowling took so McGonagall. If you go on Pottermore, McGonagall's birthday used to have like the day, the month, and the year. 
if you go on Pottermore now, or maybe they fixed it, but when you went on Pottermore right when uh, Crimes of Grindelwald came out, it was just the day and the month. They took off the year because fans obviously remembered. <laughs> so there was that. There's this whole bullshit with, I mean, Credence's age keeps fucking changing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't even know how old he is anymore. It's so stupid and so irritating. And then the whole bait at the end of uh, Crimes of Grindelwald where it, like, makes you think that Credence is a brother of Dumbledore. And it's like, by the time Credence was born, their fucking mother was dead and the dad was in Azkaban. Like, I get you're trying to bait people and get people excited, but you're pissing us off. Like, we, like the fans who grew up with this, we know the lore behind it. We, like, all scoured Pottermore as children, learning everything we could. And then she's just, she's tearing it to shit. Because first it was a uh, cursed child, and Ooh. now this. Yeah. Uh, and now, for somebody who has also read the books, uh, do, do you echo a lot of the same sentiments, or do you disagree, or how do you feel about all this? I no, I agree. I agree with pretty much all of it. Um, yeah. I liked the uh, the comment about Dumbledore's parents, where mom's dead, dad's in in prison. Azkaban was not known for its conjugal visit policy. <laughs> um, the the and, mentors yeah. are just are, are cocking themselves in the corner. Yes, uh, oh, Cur boy. Cursed Child is its own whole hour-long rant it's not god i i can understand that and I, I my wife is uh giving me the three-hour rant about it which i rightfully very very frustrating yeah. um but right now since there's a lot of issues that we do have with it let's talk about some good ones before we get into the bad so uh what are three things i'll have each of you answer what are three things that you felt were positive coming from this franchise uh, thus far, these three movies that added to the uh, Potter world? I enjoyed the Jacob character, the muggle. Um, I do too. Yeah. I enjoyed his interaction with Newt. Um, it was fun. Do I necessarily think it, you know, lifts the franchise as a whole? I don't know if I'd go that far, but it was fun to watch. I think it's I think it's something that's very I, I think it, taking it out would hurt the franchise. Yeah. In my opinion, I think mm -hmm. it's important to have somebody like us in the movie. Harry Potter, for the be for better or worse, he was always our Luke Skywalker. He was always somebody who's learning that world and doesn't know the world like we, that everybody else does. So we learned through Harry's eyes. So I think having him around was kind of fun. You know, and it also kind of made us want, wish like we were Jacob. Like, oh my God, what if a wizard said that I could go on an adventure? What if Dumbledore gave me a wand? You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty insane. Which, by the way, Dumbledore giving a muggle a, essentially, let's call it a weapon uh, that he doesn't know how to use. Very risky. But we'll go into that. I mean, there was more of a chance of Jacob, like, accidentally hurting himself or killing himself. <laughs> Then, what? Like, What's actually, the curse called? <laughs> I can have it that. Oh shit! Oh, fuck. green light just flashes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. My bad. My bad. And since I'm a muggle, and this is wizard laws, uh, diplomatic immunity. <laughs> I I don't know what the wizard laws were in the 1930s or 1940s, but I'm pretty damn sure given a muggle a wand is like up on the do not do list oh, oh dumbledore cool. would get in trouble but i think jacob would get out he would he would pull that diplomatic community the villain did in uh lethal weapon too every time he did something diplomatic community i think they would just obliviate jacob and call it a day <laughs> that's fair enough like i don't think they would really care unless he like killed someone <laughs> But like, uh, that's fair. They would just oblivious him and be like, "All right, fuck off now." He did try to. He did try to attempt assassination. Well, people thought he tried to attempt assassination. Yeah. Which I I love how this movie they were. <laughs> Jacob's like, "Oh crap!" Um, and now, Sarah, what is something that you, you took away from the movie that you felt added to the elements of this? Um, I liked seeing the creatures because a lot of the creatures that are mentioned in the Harry Potter books show up in the movies. So I really liked that. I love Newt and Jacob. I mean, that's 
pretty much it. Besides, like, the standard, the movies are visually stunning and the music is good. But those are just, like, staples throughout any mm -hmm. Harry Potter franchise. I echo all that. And I, and for me, one of my favorites was uh, Johnny Depp as Grindelwald. Yeah. I personally... Because anytime you've ever described Grindelwald to me, I just got this... The guy is char charismatic. He's rock and roll. You know what I mean? He's a he's a symbol. You know what I mean? So when Johnny Depp was Grindelwald, it just made sense. That's what he looks like. Like I mean, I mean, J.K. Rowling could have just gone back in her Potter more and be like, "What's Grindelwald look like? Exactly like Johnny Depp. That's all." She literally could write that, and I think all you fans would be like, "All right, that makes sense." Yeah. I, there would be no pushback for that. <laughs> Equal uh, Grindelwald, see Johnny Depp. But I, I thought he was fantastic, which I want to say this real fast, okay? I'm going to say <laughs> this, and this is a hot take, okay? It's an early hot take. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We, we, needed, Grind we needed Johnny Depp in this movie because yeah. here's the reason why. I could see Jude Law fucking Johnny Depp. I can't see Jude Law fucking Mad Mickelson. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't see the chemistry there. If you came up and be like, I got two sex tapes. One is Jude Law and Johnny Depp. The other one's Mickelson and Law. I would throw that one in the lake and I'd be like, we're watching the Law Depp suck fest. All right. We are watching it. Because like they had, I, I'm just saying, Jude Law deserves a good looking guy. Because they were, they, they, you know, they were a couple. Have you seen uh, Mads Mikkelsen in, uh, what, was it Hannibal? I think that show he's in. Yeah, i seen him in Hannibal, yeah. He may not be conventionally attractive, but that, he is an attractive man. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm i Johnny Depp all the way. I, I'm so, I, I know. Look, look. I know there might be fans that see him as attractive, and I know I'm body shaming, but I feel like I could do it because I, I look like me, so I'm punching up because I don't have the millions of dollars that Mikkelsen has. Johnny Depp 20 years ago, yes. Johnny Depp at 50 wearing 100 bracelets and three belts, less so. <laughs> I think they also tried to make Mad Mads Mickelson. I don't even fucking know his name. They tried to make him not look like Johnny Depp to the point where it made him look worse. That That's why I think you have that opinion. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's not a bad looking dude. They I were was... just, I think they thought that if they did the same hair, same makeup, same wardrobe. Oh, that would have been career suicide. Yeah. That so career suicide. they were like, hey, let's throw this on him. And it was not good. Yeah. I'm just saying, because the reason why I say that is because when you see the wand fight scene at the very end between the two of them, it's built up. Oh, yeah. Oh, I fell asleep. You fell asleep. Yeah. They <laughs> fought. And like, I wanted some like some connection because at the one point they were about to kill each other mm -hmm. and and then they stopped. But part of me didn't feel like they should have stopped. Part of me like, kill him. But like if it was giant Depp and Jude Law, I think they, they, they could convey the chemistry of loving each other. And I think it would have been way more powerful. But either. So either way, the battle would have had to stop because that like huge battle with Grindelwald and Dumbledore. I don't know when that happens. I think it's like the forties. But but that's my point. But they, it does have to stop. But I think yeah. it did. But seeing the two of them like have a moment, like oh we love each other, and then stop fighting. It I didn't believe it because I'm like I don't believe you two love each other. Yeah, but we we knew how the battle ended before the first movie got made. True. Yeah. True. I just, I guess, I guess I wanted that. I just wanted, uh, I, I just think the guy, and I know probably a lot of Mad Mickelson fans are like, fuck you right now. I, for me, like, I think he's great at playing villains that are stoic, that are creepy. I think he's really good at that. I, somebody is charismatic and charming and, I, I've never, I, you know, maybe it's because I've watched him in the James Bond movie as a villain and seen him as Hannibal. And maybe I'm failing to allow him to break his typecast. But for me, I just, I can't see it. Well, so, I mean, there are many different components coming into play with this movie. A, it's a different screenwriter because J.K. Rowling. Oh, she wrote it with Chloe. Yeah, but he fucking tore her version apart. Thank God. Um, So we have a different screenwriter different actor and i think those two things together 
it kind of just made it very lackluster. I think the whole production was so concerned with having him. Oh, that's ironic. Having him. <laughs> 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 having him so concerned with like not acting like Johnny Depp that they went in the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. Then I think they writ they probably changed Grindelwald's dialogue on purpose. I agree with or that. Or stuff like that, and the direction was different because the way. Johnny Depp was directed. I don't think it was anywhere how Mad Mickelson was directed in this. And I and I agree with that. I I, I think and, and and to be fair, Mad Mickelson had some big shoes to fill. He did, but they just shouldn't have recast it. They should never. I yeah. I. I it that the, was just stupid. In the uh, in the towards the end of the, I don't remember if it was book six or book seven of Harry Potter. They're telling a story about how Grindelwald he he steals something and uh, he's like jumps backwards out of a window and for a brief moment he's kind of crouched on the windowsill and he smiles and runs away and I'm having trouble picturing Mads Mikkelsen uh, crouched on a windowsill, yeah, um, <laughs> yes. like a like a gremlin. I yes, yeah. that was that was book seven. I want to say. Something that, to that effect, right? Isn't that when he steals the elder wand? I want to say yes. It's it's yeah. been a while. It's been a while. I work from I've worked from home for the last three years, so now okay. I don't have an excuse to listen to the audiobooks for three hours a day. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Now it's it, it's it, he's a well, yeah. I, I I think it was it was just a hard a hard uh, role to take over. When, I mean, because like I said, Johnny Depp when he plays a role, in my opinion. He makes it very iconic, and I, I just think sometimes I think that's one of the hard things about it, and the fact that they try to go so in the opposite direction of having him be his own character, and I think that kind of, I mean, anytime you do a recast, I mean, that's that that's always going to be the issue. Yeah, but it was just the circumstances around the recast. I think just made it worse. Yeah, because right. I'm sorry if you're going to take Johnny Depp off. Then take Amber Heard off of fucking Aquaman. Yeah. Make it fair. It's both owned by Warner Brothers. Yeah. Like uh, it, it's it, it's a tough it's a tough situation with that. It, but it doesn't get any better because uh interesting enough, I guess we could talk about this. Um uh stop <laughs> fucking shit up, Ezra. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Literally, why is nobody watching him? <laughs> I, he just likes punching people in the face. Oh, totally. This time it's he like, threw a chair at a woman's face and gave her an inch gash on the head. Uh, no, you're welcome. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Did he? She, then he's, he's like, well, I was trying to give her the lightning bolt. She just didn't stand still. That's not my fault. Didn't he try to set something on fire? Yeah. yeah. His yeah, career? <laughs> he tried to set fire. Uh, he called out ISIS. He called out the Klan. <laughs> This year, uh, got arrested in Hawaii twice. <laughs> like this dude, like, look, this guy is tied to two big major franchises. I, I literally, Warner Bros. should have like just somebody following him, like, like odd jobs from James Bond, and then just <laughs> whack the shit out of him when he thinks about doing anything stupid. What kind of moral stand is that? Look, guys, this might be a controversial opinion, but I'm going to say it. I'm not a big fan of the Klan and ISIS. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. There's that, That's not the issue. It's not the issue. It's just it came out of nowhere. Like, he does yeah, something no really shit. shitty, and then, he, and then immediately he's like, all right, guys, guys, I know what I did was wrong, but the Klan, fuck them, right? And it's just like, it's like, yeah, we agree with you, but it's like, why can we address the fact that you choke slammed a woman in Iceland? Like... That's the thing. I uh, I read somewhere someone said that uh, the Flash has uh, become Eobard Thawne. Yes, he pretty much is e- Eobard Thawne at this point. Like, yeah, like again, like I said, nothing wrong with him wanting to take on two terrorist groups, but it's just like the context of it is mad. It's it's just it's just like you know he he, he he's like I'm gonna take on a terrorist group, but first. I gotta burn down this uh, this uh, condo in Hawaii because I hate this couple of karaoke. <laughs> Again, that's what Jesus. he does. 
he gets sidetracked from doing the right thing. If we, if imagine if they had an odd jobs guy stop him from wanting to hurt ter- tourists in Hawaii, maybe he might save the world. Maybe he might take down ISIS. Who knows? Well, that's, hey, that's a job, man. Full time Ezra Wrangler. You get yeah. to work in Hawaii. I'll done. Let's go. I, I, I would do that job. I would feel bad whoever had that job. Um, we, we, I would take it. Your only, your only responsibilities are: don't let him set things on fire. Don't okay. let him punch a woman. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait! Keep, don't let him punch a woman. Don't. don't let him. That's what I. That's what I said. Oh, I'm pretty okay. sure I said that. Oh, uh, probably well, cut out. Um, and don't don't get him anywhere near ISIS or the clan. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, there you uh, go. I think that's good. I think I think that's that's all he needs to do. Like, but the guy. Like it, it's crazy because like it sucks because he's a part of so many good projects and right now there's rumors that say the end of uh, Flashpoint um, and I'm not I'm not, I've I've heard people talk about I talked about it, the his appearance will get changed because of Flashpoint kind of like hmm. kind of like how uh, you know your your doppelganger isn't always always looks like you and it would be an easy way to bring in like Grant Gustin from the CW that everybody keeps talking about. That'd be good if they did that, though. That's I, I'd be okay with that. Yeah. I would be okay with that because the guy knows how to play the knows how to play Barry. He's a great actor, and I think I think you would have to offer him a lot of money because, like, I I I understand as an actor he doesn't want to be typecast as Barry Allen forever. But I think like if you let him be Barry Allen, but then give him like two juicy roles, you know, every other year, I think he would do it. Honestly, For the, I just want Ezra Miller to just go away. I don't like him. Yeah. For the amount of money that guy's getting paid to be the Flash, like, I'll play the Flash for a decade. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and the shittiest part, he's playing two different Flashes in the new movie. Oh, that's even worse. He's Jeez. two Flashes. He's he's Barry from Earth 1, and then he's Barry from Earth Other, and he has that long, douchey hair that he had in uh, this new movie. Oh, <laughs> so, and then what, what pisses me off, I know we're getting off topic about this, He's ruining the return of two great Batmans. Oh, God. Here we go. Wait, who? Affleck Ezra? and Keaton. You talking about Ezra or you talking about the other guy? Ezra. He's ruining the okay. return of okay. two Batmans, I'm saying. Because the two Batmans are supposed to show up in his Flash movie on top of having Supergirl as well. They're still going to release the movie. They're still going to release it, but... Yeah. Dude, the Flash movie, if you've known the history about that, that thing's been cursed since day one. That's been in production... For almost ten years, yeah. So yeah, they got they got a lot of pressure right now. But anyways, so, let's get back yeah. to Fantastic Beast. So Ezra Miller is definitely a huge problem. Hold on, said Daniel. So Doug Daniel says Nigel would play the Flush. Yes, that I yeah. think I, I think you could do it. Yeah, I'm I halfway think. there. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, let's uh. Let's uh, transition out of this topic and uh, let's talk about um, some other things real quickly before we uh, uh, get to the fun stuff. So one of the things I wanted to kind of talk about is Fantastic Beast is essentially a magic tiger king. Yeah. Fantastic Beast is just an entire franchise. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it, but it's just, you know, J.K. Rowling, somebody said, J.K. Rowling, you can't top Harry Potter. And she was like, hold my beer. Yeah. And it became Tiger King. And then yeah. she dropped the beer. And yeah. She <laughs> dropped the beer. <laughs> like, here's the thing about Newt. Newt is a great character. I think I like him more than Harry Potter because there's, because I, I said over the messenger today, he kind of feels like this wizardry world Indiana Jones, who's like a part time teacher, who's like, but, but in this case, he's a magi, magi how do you say it? Magizologist? Magi zoologist. Not even going to try that. It's a hard word. I was trying to, I was practicing it all day and I biffed it. But like, and you know, and he's, he's just trying to, you know, take care of his animals and he gets caught in the middle of uh, these bigger, these larger in life circumstances, much like how Indiana Jones did. Indiana Jones was just trying to find the Ten Commandments. He wasn't trying to fight Nazis, you know, but that's what he's got to do. He's got to fight the Nazis, you know. Look at dude. He he went to America in the first movie to to release the bird. That's all he was doing. He didn't know he was gonna get mixed up fighting wizard terrorists and yeah. fighting the big granddaddy of them all. 
So, I mean, but then again, Dumbledore told him to go to America, so he should have been suspicious. Honestly, though. <laughs> wait, but can we just point out the fact that when Hagrid got expelled, his wand got fucking snapped. Newt gets expelled and has a fucking wand. Nobody snapped it. Nobody did anything. They're like, here, you, you're expelled. You're not allowed to study magic anymore, but you can still have the thing that uh, generates magic. Like Newt was the reason they made that law. Huh? Like when ha- Newt was the reason they made that law. Oh, so like when- was? I, oh, I'm, ta- I'm, I'm talking about it. I'm talking about it. My butt. Um, no, it makes when, sense. I mean, when yeah. Hagrid got in trouble, they're like, "Should we let him keep his wand?" I don't know, man. We let Newt keep his wand. Look what he did. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, he got. He's. I, and what's really good about this is that they're getting to that World War II area. Yeah, they are. I, I'm interested to see what they're going to do. But also, like, the Harry Potter series was just a huge retelling of the Holocaust, basically. Yeah. I don't want to see it again. I I, I think... <sighs> I I think what's this is kind of an interesting thing. And, I, again, I didn't read the books. So I don't know a lot about Grindelwald. I think they're going to do a lot of parallelism with that. Yeah. I, if they if they don't harp on too much about that, I think they'll be okay. Because it just seems like he just – because, I mean, and this is – I'm talking out of my butt, Brandon, when I say this. Grindelwald seems like a more radical version of Voldemort. Gr- Grindelwald is – is a is a wizard Hitler, and it's yeah. not it's not subtle. Like he's that's what he yeah. is. Yeah, it's not at all. Yeah, yeah. like like because what I mean is like, I mean not to say Voldemort isn't awful. He he is clearly awful. You know what I mean? But I mean like anytime I've watched the movies, I hit he's always awful with a point. But like I was when we were watching uh, Crimes of Grindelwald. Grindelwald like kills the two parents. He walks in the room. He sees the baby. Just and they off the baby right there. Well, he has somebody to kill the baby. But still, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like he didn't have to kill the baby. There wasn't a point to killing the baby, except for his indifference to human life. Yeah. Well, 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 he doesn't have an indifference to human life. He just does muggles. not like muggles. That's what I mean. Doesn't like muggles. Yeah. Muggles are less than human. That's the whole. That's the yeah. idea. Yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah. 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 I'm just. I, I, yeah. It's just that's what I get from it. I I don't know. I guess that is the debate. Who is worse, Voldemort or Grindelwald? I don't think you could even pinpoint who is worse, though. Why not? Because they're okay. We have a seven. We have seven books on Voldemort's actions. Correct. They don't really start going into Grindelwald until they don't discuss them in four. I don't think they discuss them in five. So you really only have six and seven. Okay. Well, first off, and, no. Let me finish. Well, God, and everything's you, possible. Shut the fuck up. Okay, I'll shut. <laughs> the only thing you really have, the main point of him being in six and seven, is A, you know the origin of the Elder Wand. Grindelwald took it. Dumbledore fought Grindelwald. Dumbledore now has the Elder Wand. And Grindelwald hated Muggles. That You don't get this huge backstory. We don't know anything about his childhood. We don't know about specific actions he has he took during his reign of terror we just know there was a reign of terror but we don't know how long it lasted what it entailed how many followers he had were the followers like the death eaters you don't have any of it you just you literally have elder wand reign of terror that for an undetermined period in dumbledore you don't even get the vibe that dumbledore and Grindelwald were in love with each other in the books. Oh, yeah, yeah that was a... That was, uh, that was decided after, yeah. Yeah, J.K. Rowling decided after the seventh book was released, like, oh, Dumbledore's gay, it wasn't relevant to Harry's story. And then when Fantastic Beasts came out, we were all just like, yes, they're in love with each other. It makes perfect sense. Which, there's nothing wrong with that, but getting back to my point, we can't say if Grindelwald's worse or not because nothing has been established all we have is the movies now true no i i understand that i it just for me like okay so back here's the thing Riddlewald seems like he's he's trying to start a rally he's trying to do terrorist attacks trying to steal elections and stuff like that um the most that 
let's see, Voldemort, um, in the first movie, he hijacks a substitute teacher. Uh, the second movie, he gaslights a student with his little journal. Um, the fourth one. Um, he's, oh, yeah, I forgot. He's like not in three. Yeah, yeah. The, four, yeah, the, the fourth one, he just sort of has a terrorist attack during a sporting event. Kills a student. Yeah, but then Dumbledore is like, all right. Resume class. Resume class. You know if there was a sh if there was a school shooting in the Wizarding World, you know Dumbledore would be like, "All right, everybody, back to class. All's good. Pretty All's much. good." Like the the one group kid that like he what was three people that got almost killed by a snake, and he's like, "I don't know. Maybe we should maybe we should call the parents." Like I love how he's I love how he's indecisive with that. Like I don't know. I mean, it's a giant friggin' snake going all around. I don't. Let's do a curfew and then we'll we'll check back in a little bit. I mean, well, he he told the truth about Voldemort coming back, and uh, yeah. three quarters of the wizarding wizarding community just turned on him. I felt bad you know? from there. I did feel bad, but I mean, like, but at the end of the day, I think it was just that he's like, "All right, I'm going to get an army of students. <laughs> I'm going to do this." He yeah. loves his army of students. He didn't get together the army of students though. That was all Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Yeah, but you know, he groomed him to it. He groomed Harry. He groomed Harry. You knew and it. By proxy, Ron and Hermione. But that that's pretty much it. You knew it. You knew it. All but it takes is one. But then getting back to okay. the topic, okay. Voldemort also invades the Ministry of Magic. They don't really go into that in the sixth, or no, in the seventh <laughs> and eighth movies. They don't go into it, but I do see it. So he yeah. literally, who does he make Minister of Magic? Pious Thickness. Okay. He, yeah. It, his takeover of the ministry happens between books. So, like at the yeah. end of the one book, he's back. He's he's up and running around. And at the beginning of the next book, he's already got people in the ministry. Yeah. Wait, wait. What's his name again? I'm pretty sure it's Pious Thickness. I love that name. <laughs> I, that, I'm 98 percent sure that's his name. I just it just sounds very porn star namey. So that is the one disadvantage to only having heard the audiobooks. I've heard them I've heard them ten times each. There are plenty of words where it's like, oh, that's how that's spelled. Oh crap. Oh. <laughs> but and then Voldemort also it invades Hogwarts. So he has Death Eaters teaching the schools. We don't know if he was doing that with Durmstrang and uh the Bow Battens. He could be doing it with the Durmstrangs because the fucking head of that school was a former Death Eater. Yeah. So he's going after the youth and the administration. So he's kind of hitting at all angles. Damn it, he's going political too. Son of a bitch. It, they don't say a lot in the movies. They cut a lot of shit out. Yeah, they love, I, I, I didn't realize how political these movies are. These are very political movies. If you would read the book. It's hard. No, it's not. There's a there's words. They're written for children. She's got headaches. you. She's got you there, buddy. It's I hard. get headaches, dude. I'm it hurts after a while. Thinking. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I know John is throwing this in there. Dobby is the worst character of all time. Okay, if you're gonna say that, can you at least spell Dobby's name correctly, please, John? <laughs> I think John is the worst character of all time. <laughs> Now, now let's talk about Dobby real fast. I because I, 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 I this is a topic I was gonna save a little later in the show, but uh, cameos from Harry Potter we hope to see in Fantastic Beasts. I don't want any. You don't want any. I don't want any cameos because I don't want them to destroy what has already been established in the movies or in the books. You don't think Dobby will show up? He would be in, be enslaved unless. I don't know. Maybe wait, look. I maybe J.K. will erase another Pyramore entry. We don't no. know. Maybe we don't know what'll happen. Dobby I, could show up. I don't want any more cameos unless the final movie, like one of the last scenes, we see Grindelwald go to Azkaban, and then all of a sudden we see Voldemort walking to the Potter's house. If they do that time jump and we see that, that's okay. I don't want anything else. I don't want her 
fucking up anything else, I don't trust her. You don't trust her? I do not trust this bitch. And, and, and you know, and, and, and that's the thing. She's not uh, a screenwriter. That's the one thing I've always said about these movies. Like, she's a great author. I just, it, but being a screenwriter is an entirely different thing. I mean, the one... I mean, one of the best case in points of movie making, I love this movie, but we got to be honest. What it is, what it is Maximum Overdrive by Stephen King, written and directed by him, based on a story he wrote. You know what I mean? While that movie was, you know, it, well, it's a fun little movie. You know what I mean? It's not great, but it's fun. You know what I mean? Watch Emilio Estevez negotiate with a Green Goblin truck. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but so, like, I, but like I said, screenwriting, I think, is an entirely different animal because there's more to showing than you're able to do that in a book and it has to land. Well, I think the issue also is she thinks she can do whatever she wants because she's, she's, she's taking stuff. She has an idea, likes the idea, but it doesn't line up with what she's previously established. So she bends what she's previously established to justify the choices. And I think that's why it's not landing. I can make I can make sense, but uh, uh, is there anything like that you've uh, noticed? <sighs> you said that J.K. Rowling was is a good you know wrote wrote a good series. She she was a good author. She wrote seven really good books. Are yeah. they perfect? No, but are they good? Like are they fun? Is it a good read? Is it a great series? Is it a good experience? Sure. Then it just kind of went off the rails, and yeah. and like like she was saying, where it's just uh, just because you wrote the f original series doesn't mean you can go back and and add stuff to it and change stuff. It's it's a established universe. Yeah, I think <sighs> one of the, the trickiest parts about doing a good spinoff, uh, I think the greatest example is to always look at Better Call Saul yeah. at this point. Mm -hmm. Like how well they they don't contradict the main series, but they're able to bring in all these really fun cameos and characters that were just mentioned in the original show, but then they give them like fully fleshed out character arcs. And I, I think uh, Vincent Gilligan understands that. But you're right, you know, you can't just go back and try to retread and recycle, change because you know, for some people who are diehard McGonagall fans, you know. Getting that simple, getting the birthday wrong is it's aggravating because it mm -hmm. cheapens the character, doesn't make the character defined. Yeah, and I think the other thing that is frustrating if other people who grew up with Harry Potter, so when the seventh book released, we were like, that was it. All of us were like, what the fuck do we do now? Like, this series that consumed our lives is over, like, there, there's nothing left in the franchise. And that's when Pottermore came up and she, J.K. Rowling pushed Pottermore a lot, especially when it first launched. And then after it had its second relaunch where the format completely changed and it basically became like an encyclopedia of Harry Potter that she was still pushing. It, so you're pushing all this stuff and the like the readers we consumed this like we consumed it because it was the only new harry potter thing we had so we know it we know it like the back of our hands like the rest of the series and now she's thinking like oh i can just delete this off of pottermore nobody's gonna notice and it's like no we'll notice mm -hmm. like there's a whole generation of fans that got an email every time something was uploaded onto pottermore about a new thing whether it was the marauders or the origins for the different wands, stuff like that. Like it, it, it was a thing, and it was a very important to the people who grew up with the franchise. Yeah. Uh, now, Nigel, were you uh, a Pottermore fan by any chance? I was not. So I actually, my first exposure to the series was when I started listening to those audiobooks, and that was like five, six years ago. Oh. Um, my wife and her family were big. They read the books. They, um, she told me a story about one of the books came out. They like pre-ordered it. They got it, and then they all took turns reading it. Like uh, she would read it. She read it. And when she was done, she gave it to her brother who could read it. When he was done, he he gave it to the dad who could read it. And it was just like they were, you know, they were big into it. Um, my sister wow. was too. 
uh, almost too much. And then uh, I, I got into it. I was probably 29, 30 at the, at the time. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's interesting. I mean, for me, like I said, it's kind of interesting with the show having kind of this uh, – Kind of like someone who grew up with it, and read every single little thing about it. Someone who came into it uh, recently, reading it. Me, not reading it at all, but just watching the movies and going, "Hey, you know, if I can read subtitles, it counts." You know, it, it, which I still think it does. I mean, it's like word karaoke. So I mean, no, no, it counts. No, audio book, audio book, audio book. We, audio book. we audio. have all the audio books. I'll, I'll try. You have them, and you still haven't listened. That's now it's on you, man. I've now, had them. Now it's your years. fault. It is my fault. I, it's hard. It's like I got to listen to a book. <laughs> no, like, you struggle with that. It's, I get what happens is, is I get like, oh my god, I want to be just as creative, and then I'll stop doing it and do something I'm supposed. To, I want to do that's creative, and then I'm like, oh shit, I didn't read the book. Um, I I get sidetracked very easily. No, here's how bad it is. So two months before. Curse Child was released. I was like, because I hadn't read the series in a long ass time, and I was working in a, and I was in college. I was like, I want to read these. I don't have time. I'm gonna listen to the audiobooks. We were dating at the time, and I we would be in the car or something, and I'm like, oh, can I put on like uh, Order of the Phoenix or something? And he'd be like, I don't want to listen to Harry Potter. I'm like, no, it's important. It's the re it, it's a reread before the new book. I don't want to listen to it, Sarah. I don't remember that. Um, and you still married him. Yeah. Now, here's, the thing. here's the thing real quick. <laughs> I'm not denying that it happened. <laughs> I'm not denying that it happened. Because I have a horrible memory. And if she mm. says it did it, I totally did it. I own it. You also would not wear a Harry Potter t-shirt to the release of the book. Unless, I did. Because I bought it for you. You were like, I don't have time to go out and buy it. And I was like, all right, what if I buy one for you? Okay, maybe I'll wear it then. Yeah. You're kind of a jackass. Okay. Yeah. You're all <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a whore. I, I was uh, doing a lot of comedy then. Uh, no, you're jackass. Okay, jackass just it is. A jackass. jackass it is. All right. But anyways, uh, I'm a model. I'm a jackass model. All right. Anyways. Uh, so anyways, uh, so let's uh, recap real quickly. Uh, so. Before we end the show, uh, you know, what do we, th what do you think are going to be some predictions uh, about for this movie? What do you, it, I mean, let's just say, yes, it made enough money. Yeah. I mean, cause the way they ended this movie, they ended it in a weird way where if it's the last movie, it's not going to be yeah. detrimental the way they ended it. They ended it very soft, but they ended it where they can move forward. So let's say if they do move forward, uh, Nigel, what do you think uh, the next direction is uh, for the movie? To st a stop sign. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> All right. Let's say you get Clove, the guy who wrote six of the, uh, sorry, seven of the eight Harry Potter movies. He's writing it. Would you? What would you hope for if you knew that we had a, a good screenwriter? A completely different uh, story. Something that isn't related to this garbage. Really? Like, so you don't, so basically you're done with the Dumbledore Grindelwald war. I'm done with the way they're presenting it. They took two interesting stories and mashed them up into one bullshit series. You know, what's interesting. So Newt's commander becomes a magic zoologist, becomes the most famous one in the world, writes the literal textbook on magical creatures. That's an interesting story. I'd watch that. How that guy learned all his stuff. We could learn alongside him, see all the stuff. And at the end of the movie, he decides he wants to write a book. Oh, cool. That ties into the universe. Dumbledore and Grindelwald have a big old battle. Let's see that battle. Why are those two things combined? That's a good point. I don't that, understand. That is a that is a really good point. And I, I think that to echo what Sarah said last night, you know, unlike the Harry Potter series, which was planned out from book one to seven. The, these this, these movies weren't planned out at all. They've it, sort of been yeah. writing them as they go. Yeah. It's yeah. It seems like they made a movie. They listened to all right. What works? What did people like? All right. Put more of that in the next one. Yeah. Because the first movie was good. The first movie was magical. It had great action sequences. Yeah. It's because. They
there were hints of Grindelwald scattered throughout the movie, and then there was the reveal at the end, but he automatically is in prison. So, like, you don't, you didn't necessarily think to, oh, shit, we're going to see this whole grand storyline. It yeah. could have, it was set up in a way where it could have just been an Easter egg and everybody would have been fine with it. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, I, I think it was, I, I think you said it best. I mean, having the two storylines, you know, trying to have your cake and eat it, I think it was to be a little bit rough. And because, you know, at times, you know, there's times where I just want to see him play with the animals. I just want yeah. to see him in his little suitcase, hanging out with the animals. I'm good with the adventures. I like the adventures. Um, and, and I like that he has that relationship with Dumbledore and Dumbledore can trust him to do these things, you know, but uh, it, it's, I, I see what you're saying. It's too much and it bloats the movie badly. The, the alternative to splitting them into two series, rename the first Fantastic Beasts movie. Yeah. And then it's yeah. just about, it's about the inevitable conflict between Dumbledore and Grindelwald and Newt Scamander happens to be in it, which is neat because we know who he is, but it, it, it shouldn't, he should, I don't know. Uh, it it, it yeah. kind of, it kind of reminds me of kind of what they did with the, uh, the Boba, Be Boba Fett series. You know, right. you had the Mandalorian show up, the Mandalorian helped him out. You know what I mean? I think that is such a good idea. You know, if you have made these, if you made the Fantastic Beast movie, you know, you can have Newt running around the background of the other two movies if it's not his movie. And and, and you'd be able to focus more on Dumbledore as well. Because, like, the, the second movie, Dumbledore felt more as, like, a glorified cameo when, I mean, really, he is the central part of this battle. He's the George Washington of this battle, and we're not getting him. I, I think they just didn't know what direction to take with Dumbledore just yet mm -hmm. because I don't think they planned anything and I think the plans that they originally had for the third movie is the reason why Dumbledore wasn't in the second one that often but we didn't see the results of that because rightfully so they ripped the script the script apart after there was such an outcry from the fans that they pushed back the movie the third movie was like, all right, we're going to write this better. We're going to make sure there's like, we actually do a good job. Yeah. And I think that's why. Yeah. I, I agree with that. And plus, all in all, the first movie was very simple. Yeah, it was. It was extremely simple. Dude comes to America. Uh, beasts get out of the suitcase. You must find and collect them. There's an obscurity, which is a... Obscurial. Obscurial, which is a beast. And he, you know, and it, it just, everything kind of was breadcrumbed out nicely. Yeah. I think with the, like, there was times we watched in the last two movies, and I was like, wait, why did they do that? Wait, how could they do this? Or, wait, why did they do this? Like, when they dropped the charges for Grindelwald, uh, I, I, you know, at first I was like, why would you do that? But now I understand why they did that, because they thought if you lost the election, lost support, that's the best way to beat them. But, like, they didn't come out and, they, they didn't really come out and say they were doing that. Yeah. It was just more like, there was a lot of, there's way more showing than telling when I think sometimes you need to explain it. Because, yeah. like, when they were doing that election. That, that was, was fucking weird. Was, it was really weird. It's like, like, here's the thing. The Goblet of Fire was just so you can get your place in in the Triwizard Tournament. And that was cooler than the election. Listen, I'm not trying to say that sporting events should not be cooler than the election. But you think, like, with the Wizarding World, it's like, oh, fuck it, let's make this kind of fun. Yeah, I think they thought it would be cool, but it wasn't. Yeah. But but I do appreciate the briefness of it. <laughs> they, they got that done in three days. It didn't take three years. There was yeah. no debates. Yeah. There was nothing. They were like, all right, guys, here's this uh, weird skeleton-like dough. It's going to bow. It bows in front of you. You're the president. Puxatawney, Puxatawney Phil saw Grindelwald's shadow. He's president for the next six weeks of winter. There you go. And, and I'm going to announce him. He killed Puxatawney Phil's brother, brought him back to the dead. And that's so. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. so that was that was the ending of the movie. Sorry we spoiled it for everybody, but this is a spoiler show and you should have known it. <laughs> but uh, hey, anyways, I wanted to uh, say thank you to everybody who tuned in today. 
Uh, we'll be back next week with more show. Uh, I want to thank uh, Sarah and Nigel for joining me today. You guys rocked it out. Thank you guys so much. Uh, big shout out to John. I know he couldn't be here. And I know he had a uh, bone to pick with Dobby. We'll have to do that again on another Harry Potter show. Uh, but anyways, like I said, for anybody who's following me, uh, my comedy, check me out at www.jessepimpanel.com. I'll be on the road this week as well as I opened a new shop online. So you can buy T-shirts, uh, bumper stickers, uh, shot glasses, and pint glasses. All great stuff. What my newest one is currently uh, the best marriages and as murder documentaries, which is the truth. Let's face it. Uh, we watch those murder docs. We love it. And we thank God those murders occurred or else we would have, we'd have had nothing to watch during the pandemic. Are you done whoring yes, I'm done whoring myself. All right. Anyways, they buy you books. All right. <laughs> Anyways, until next time, I'm Jesse and you've been sitting at the grown-ups table. Thank you everybody. And have a wonderful evening. All right. Take care everyone.